Belize Watch. Knowledge of the past, impacting the present, building the future. Dr. Albert Williams was born in the Toledo District and now resides in the United States of America. He is an associate professor and chair of finance and economics at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Over the years, Dr. Williams and his family has made it a priority to give back to Belize in several ways. He recently sat down with our Belize Watch team to speak on his road to success and how others can use his life lessons to succeed. He is also a passionate musician and he shares some of his music with us. We will have all that for you after we hear from our partners. Shell Belize Limited, Honorable Kevin Bernard, the Belize Tourism Board, and the Barry. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Old York, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry, get more, feel this. Santa Marta had a chance to voice their concerns and shape the future of their village with Honorable Kevin Bernard's recent consultation. I want to thank each and every one of you who came out today to voice your concerns and to address the many issues raised today at our Santa Marta consultation and clinic day. We discussed very critical issues including land, health, education, the road infrastructure, which are all important matters that we can address together. And I am committed to ensuring that we can move Santa Marta forward. Yo le doy las gracias porque siempre él ha estado para nosotros. Está claro que estamos viendo el trabajo que nuestro honorable Kevin Bernard está haciendo en nuestra aldea. Honorable Kevin Bernard is a dedicated public servant who is committed to improving the lives of his constituents. He has a proven record of delivering results and fighting for the people he represents. Thank you, Honorable Kevin Bernard, for your leadership and for being a voice for the people of Santa Marta. Together, we can build a better future for all of us. It don't matter what part of the jewel you come from. You da you and me da me. But guess what? All are we the one.
Hey, Dr. Albert Williams. Well, you know, I, I always admire <laughs> how you play this guitar, Doc. Uh, Dr. Rene, this guitar is part of me. I like to play this guitar, and you know that. Let me make sure it's part of you, Doc. Yes. <laughs> yeah, look, well, you got the letter. It looks pretty much like it's part the, of you, indeed. This is the part. They call it bending. Uh -huh. oh, you, bend the you bend the string there up, but you make sure you get it at the right height. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. You like that, huh? Doc, you, you could make the guitar talk, man. Well, this guitar is supposed to talk to you through uh -huh. me. Some people sing, and I pick. Okay. So when I pick, I'm giving you my emotions, my message. And this song that I just played for you is called Know Thyself. Know Thyself. That is a very important message, Doc. Exactly. Know, we must know ourselves. And so in music, I'm saying know thyself. And then we have discussions when we do our, our, our little discussions here. We have... A, a good story about knowing thyself, right? But, but Doc, um, uh, the, uh, how did you, f your love for this guitar, you know, <laughs> you say it's not a part of you. How, how this guitar came about because my, I don't know, it's in genetic. Uh -huh. my, par my grandparents played guitar, my uncles and my father played a little bit, and I just learned to like it. It didn't come easy because it hurt your finger at the beginning, right? Oh yeah. But afterwards you get good at it, and then you, you get calluses at the end. Right here, they're, they're a little bit, uh, but then they're fine. Yeah. I could play for a whole hour. Uh -huh. But this guitar is a big sharp talent and a discipline, and it has one other good reason. Uh -huh. It's good for stress relief. Oh, yeah? Yeah, when you feel a little sad, you come and you play a little tune, and you play. But Doc, I noticed you travel with this guitar because I've been to your home, and uh, at, at home you have a, a entire setup. Yes. And now you're visiting with us right now, mm -hmm. and in Belize, because let us just say we are in Belize, we are not in Florida, <laughs> we're, we're in not, Belize we're in at Belize this point in time, exactly. right? And you brought along your whole setup. Uh, well, you you, you, you never traveled without this guitar, Doc. We got two units. We got a permanent one at home, and we got a traveling one at home. Uh -huh. Even the speakers are smaller that I brought with the same punch. Yeah. Isn't that correct? Is, yeah. And so I brought this guitar with the airplane, uh, and it's amazing how you walk around with this guitar in your neck, mm. and you brought all the equipment in a suitcase, and so mm. it was fine. I enjoyed doing it, so I didn't mind bringing it at all. You know, yeah. it was a good thing. Well, let me thank you for agreeing to, to, to talk to us. I know we're going to talk a bit about um, fi finances and how to manage your finances and mm. how to manage your life, basically. Exactly. All right. We certainly will. I'd love to share with you the things that we've been doing through life, and perhaps we could, uh, you know, uh, explain to the the audience of who we are and where where we get what we have from inner inside and where we're going with this life of ours. You know, well, Dr. Albert Williams, you are a university professor and you are a very good musician. I mean, you know, you you have to start to record a few commercial. Um, takes, you know. I tell you what, that's in the pipeline. Uh -huh. I have a few things that will be pro uh, produced very shortly. Uh -huh. So that same song you like about uh, Know Thyself, uh -huh. that'll be one of them. But how important is this for, to, for us to know ourselves, Doc? Extremely important because if you know yourself, then nobody around you can influence you so uh, to, to make you kind of mess up your day. Yeah. Because a lot of time people say, ah, oh, you don't know this, you don't know that. But if you know thyself, then you could walk around peacefully and maybe the stress level will be less if you know yourself. You know? To thyself be true, right? Absolutely uh -huh. correct. I agree with you. You have to be true to yourself. And that takes time, you know. Lots yes. of time you don't know yourself. You think you know until somebody hits you sideways, and then all of a sudden, wait a minute. If you're stable, nobody can knock you yeah. off your feet. And that is a very good fact you brought out. How many times do you think we know how to solve things, we know how to do this, we know how right. to do that, but you could, we always learn, Doc. And one of the things I maintain is that we learn until the day we die. We definitely, and being a professor, I'm always learning new things. Yeah. I'm teaching and I'm learning. Yes. Believe it or not, the students, you listen, you learn from them. Mm. So I end up learning every day. I'm writing research papers. I'm doing a lot of things to keep mentally active. And that's a key lesson that we need to get out. You never stop learning. And learning keeps you very active. Mm. Moving, too. Moving as well. Moving, yeah. and, 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 and having hobbies like what you have, you know, that would um, move, take away the stress. And yeah. it doesn't have to be just playing a guitar, right? Mm. It can be other, other things other that... that, that bike, doing anything. Looking at a movie. Moving a movie too, yes. <laughs> Watching movies is also good. 
But believe it or not, this helps with mental development when you can move your fingers and play complicated things. Uh -huh. People like to do puzzles, right? Yeah. To keep the brain active. But I have, a, I have a little message on my desk that says, moving and you'll live a long time. Yeah. So it's the same. Here, if you keep the brain active, the brain stays very functional. So that's a lesson we need to, to tell our people that you need to never stop learning. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to go to school and listen to a teacher. You know, you could learn in um, so many different ways. You agree? Yes, Doc. But Doc, show me how you learned this guitar. Um, what were the first notes you play? And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and walk me a little way up until, until now. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's see. No, this guitar has a scale just like a piano. Mm. You see A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you repeat. Yeah. It goes over. So you got scales just like everybody else, you know? But I so oh yeah, so uh, this guitar uh, really uh, is about playing music. I'm a I'm a instrumentalist, and I literally do what I call free phrase or ad living. You have to learn that, and then you make music with that. And if you do that, you can't go wrong. There's nothing wrong mm. unless you play something out of that pattern. So music is about patterns. Mm. You have a pattern here, I have a pattern here, I have a pattern here, and I have a pattern way down here. Mm. And when I play those notes, I rarely will go wrong because I know what the pattern is. So any musician listening to me out there, learn patterns. And if you learn patterns, you could pick like me all over. See? Then I come right here. You see, it has a pattern, and then you come here. Pattern, pattern. Can't go wrong because you know the pattern. So any musician out there, that's one of the tips I would give you. You learn patterns from the guitar neck. There are four or five of them, and if you know those patterns, you can't, can't go wrong. And right. so I pick, I close my eyes and I pick. And you do your own composition. Uh, that's exactly it. I take those patterns and I create my own like tune. So here's a tune. That's a tune. Yeah. And somebody could take the same notes and make a different. It's like you have the same ingredients, but you make one cake and I make a different cake <laughs> with the same ingredients. <laughs> and that's what music is. Music yeah. is in inspiration from within. Yeah. So I take the same patterns where thousands of people take. And I create my own Albert music. Yeah. And the same notes, that makes it even more fascinating that some people will do this. And I might do this. It depends on your skill set. Yes. And then I could do crazy things like. Yes, and yeah. so you could go even uh, all kinds of th all kinds of things. And you could hit me that um, Paul McCartney and and and, you and John Lennon. You could do that. Uh, you could do Carlos Santana. Oh, Santana! Yeah, that's 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 I love his music. I played it notes for note, and it's not easy to do because he's a superstar, you know, yeah. but you, you like it. So the music should be something that becomes part of you, like yeah. riding a bicycle, and that's kind of the level where I'm at right now. I don't need to look at this fretboard. I actually know what goes and what doesn't go. Yeah, well, Doc, before we get into our discussion, right, uh -huh. because I know we had programmed this, th this to be a discussion, right. and I, I'm so Im Im <laughs> enthused and intrigued with your guitar and your music, mm -hmm. you know, I want to ask you to play a song for us before we get into, in, 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 into our discussion. Right, right? So, so which, which, which one do you want to play for me? Um, I can see which one. I don't play, I'll play, um, let's see, I'll play a Latin song for you. A Latin, Latin song, Doc? Yeah, what I kind I of Latin like song smooth, I play for you? A smooth song, and I, it is like, like your watching this no no i play my own in music oh, your own music uh, most right. of the music i play is mine i don't like to borrow too much of other okay. people's things but this music important. is about kind of like smooth sailing rather than, that's what i call it actually smooth sailing so we don't get in trouble with copyright no. we are playing dr albert williams original smooth composition sailing. smooth sailing so, <laughs>
like it? Dr. Albert Williams and smooth sailing. Dr. Albert Williams on the guitar. Doc, smooth sailing. What um, inspired smooth sailing? Smooth sailing is you sit back and you watch the world and you kind of sit there like watching the sunset or the sunrise and you say, look how beautiful that is, you know? And so you just kind of close your eyes and you make some music. And that kind of what inspired me for that particular song, you know, mm -hmm. smooth sailing. And we need some smooth sailing in our lives that's sometimes. Right. And so that was it. So when you need some heavy stuff, you get some other rhythms. But mm -hmm. smooth sailing is like you close your eyes and you're like you're traveling, mm -hmm. traveling. And we'll need to have some periods when there's smooth sailing in our lives. And this is like one of those. So if you need to relax, like you're sitting at the beach, you could put on a song like this. And you don't need to have anything in your mind, just let it go with the music. So that's what you were doing when you composed it, right? You, you were just taking it easy. Absolutely. Can you recall exactly what you were doing when the song the notes came to mind? Well, no, but I was closing my eyes and just reflecting on life. That's how it works. And as you probably see that most of my music, I'm closing my eyes because yeah. I'm trying to connect with who I am through the guitar. Uh. It's not just playing notes, it's about playing that song to get the feeling and the inspiration that comes with it. Wow. Like I'm connecting with the universe, how about that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Doc, but there are different types of guitars, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, so how, how would you describe this guitar oh, that you're using? This is one of the so-called highly demanded guitars. It's a Fender Stratocaster. Mm. And most guitars would go wild to have a guitar like this because this guitar is truly, every year you touch it, it'll give you the note. Mm. But there's a wide range of brands of Brand guitars. Brand, yeah. And but I like this one because this one, you bend it, you can play it. And I grew up playing one like this when I was in Toledo. So mm. I bought this one, but this is a guitar that most players would like to play. Did you ever play with a band? Yeah, I did. I played a little bit in some a little band in PG. And then wait when a minute, wait a minute. I think the Harriers in my name. Uh, remember the oh, this Harriers when they come through yes, and I they decide. Band, uh, band, the That's PG correct. Band, right? So I was in there picking away and strumming mostly and uh, but then after that, I played a little reggae band in Canada when I was going to school, and that was Caribbean brothers playing, and, and a sister too, playing together. And we played every gen genre of music. So mm -hmm. music is in my DNA, and uh, I use it now to more for inspiration and as well as to produce. I want to leave some music for the world, Albert Williams' music, Dr. Williams' music. Smooth sailing is what you played a while ago, Doc. Mm -hmm. and. Like I said before, I totally enjoyed right? But how could we have smooth sailing in our lives? Because that is what is important, mm -hmm. to go through our lives with as smooth sailing as possible, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 and there are some tips as to how we can, we can possibly achieve that, you know? Depend mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd like to tell you that we could discuss this and I could share some of my successes and my challenges and, and risks that we had to take to make smooth sailing happen. All right. That, that's very important, Doc. I, I would like for us to sit uh, for a while and talk about your transitioning and um, how you made it from where you were to where you are and where we today. Going. And where we're going. And how you can uh, tie it in with where, you, where, where, Wonderful where, you, where you're chief. going. Let's right? do that. Let's do that. When we come back, Dr. Williams continues his discussion looking at how using education can help break the cycle of poverty. We have that after we hear from our partners. Shell Belize Limited, Honorable Kevin Bernard, the Belize Tourism Board, and the Barry. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Old York, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita, Dibari. Get more, Belize.
Island Traveler. Are you? The people of Santa Marta had a chance to voice their concerns and shape the future of their village with Honorable Kevin Bernard's recent consultation. I want to thank each and every one of you who came out today to voice your concerns and to address the many issues raised today at our Santa Marta consultation and clinic day. We discussed very critical issues including land, health, education, road infrastructure, which are all important matters that we can address together. And I am committed to ensuring that we can move Santa Marta forward. Yo le doy las gracias porque siempre él ha estado para nosotros. Está claro que estamos viendo el trabajo que nuestro honorable Kevin Bernard está haciendo en nuestra aldea. Honorable Kevin Bernard is a dedicated public servant who is committed to improving the lives of his constituents. He has a proven record of delivering results and fighting for the people he represents. Thank you, Honorable Kevin Bernard, for your leadership and for being a voice for the people of Santa Marta. Together, we can build a better future for all of us. It don't matter what part of the jewel you come from. You that you and me that me. But guess what? All are we the one. Dr. Williams, Dr. Albert Williams, mm -hmm. this is the serious part of our discussion now, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at your past before we look at your present mm -hmm. and before we examine what you want to do in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> right? that, is such a, that is such a nice thing to do. Uh -huh. You know, we all have a past and all of it is very rich and colorful. My past started in Punta Gorda. That's where I was born and I went to primary school there went to high school there, and uh, I then moved on to St. John's College, and I went there, and I, you know, you get your diplomas, and you move on, and then um, <coughs> those are successes, you know, you work your way upward. Then I was lucky to get a scholarship, went to Canada, and I did a bachelor's there, and I worked, came back, and so then you moved on, and then you had an opportunity to do a master's degree in uh, applied economics and agricultural economics, and then I got another opportunity down the road. I missed the work pieces in between. And then that, that really, these educational opportunities that I was able to get opened many doors for employment for me. So mm -hmm. the past is a blend of successes, is success in education. And then I went on to do a PhD in economics and finance too. Mm -hmm. So those successes are wonderful to have. But in between, I served Belize primarily by working. So after the associate degree, I went back to Clever College and mm -hmm. I taught. So I helped people along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. Then after I got the bachelor's degree, I went back to Compre I went to comprehensive mm -hmm. school in Balmopan and taught for five years. Then I switched out. I went to DFC and I became a banker. Mm -hmm. Then I got a chance to do the masters and then I came back and worked as an economist for the government of Belize in agriculture. It's funny how you. You, you blend work and study together, but all in contributing. So, and the last component was when I came back with the PhD, I went to the Belize Marketing Board, and that was a really nice job. So I'm saying that you study, a door open, another door opens, and you have to find those doors and create them too. Mm -hmm. And so I worked there, and then after many years at the Marketing Board, I was able to migrate to the United States because of some green card my sister applied for. Mm -hmm. And over in the U.S., I had to struggle also. So I had some successes too, because then I landed a job at Burger King Corporation for a while. Then I landed another job as a university professor, and that's where I'm at today. I'm teaching at a very respectable school, n n uh, Nova Southeastern University, and I'm the chair of the finance and economics department, working in the leadership team of the business school. So, you know, you stop and think. I came from PG, and I work all of these things, helping Belize along the way, and now I'm helping Belize again by coming here, sharing the knowledge, yeah. and also investing in the country. We do have a few little things that we work on, you know? Doc, you have that a colorful background just now. That you gave me was this, you know, so many areas that, 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 you, mm -hmm. that, you, that you've been in, right? A wide 
many areas, but you name it. You, <laughs> just, you just said it, That's right? Correct, yeah. But what is the biggest takeaway from all of this? What did you learn? What's the lesson that you learned from all this moving around? Wonderful. The first lesson I learned is that a human being with the right preparation can change careers. So changing four or five different careers just means you have to take the challenge mm -hmm. and change. I didn't know I could give housing loans and student loans. I didn't know I was good in finance mm -hmm. until I got the opportunity. And I went with the attitude that I can make it happen. Human beings are powerful people, and we just have to do the what it takes to get there. But I wanted to share with you that I just gave you the successes, but there were challenges along the way, oh and there were yeah. risks. And I think people need to recognize that nobody, they, I just took my life in a short ten, five, few minutes, mm -hmm. but there were some challenges along the way. Remember, uh, you know, you and I have talked about poverty along the way, and we came from very humble beginnings. Yeah. So going to primary school, you know, things were not easy. And uh, one of the things that I had the challenge was we had to study before night because we had a kerosene lamp, and you, there's only so many hours we could use it because you can't use it too long. Dad will turn off the lights because he's keeping tabs on the money and so on. And so you keep keeping that in mind. The challenge was, you know, shoes that I said you had to, you probably didn't have shoes until, um, a, a, you know, a, a formal attire until maybe 13, 14 or something. Uh, so you go through these challenges of poverty and challenge. But you didn't know you were poor, Doc. That's, a, that's, a, that's the important part of it, that we're growing up, you know, because all of us grew up with challenges, exactly. but we did not see these as, as something stopping us from trying to move forward. Then, Dr. Rene, that is such a key point that we need to share with our people. We didn't feel we were poor. We were there say, hey, this is life. In fact, we were having fun, all the brothers and sisters living together, and like many of us slept in one bedroom and so on. So the challenges were not that, like, holding us back. We knew that, you know, we didn't have maybe like other people, but we didn't make that bother us. We, and our parents, it's part of the way we were raised. You know, keep going, never stop, and, and so on. But when you get to high school, there are the challenges. We, I ended up studying in the college, uh, in the building, and I have to thank the, the, the Claver College at that time. They allowed us to study in the buildings yeah. after class hours, because they knew that many families did not have the electricity and the wherewithal to, to, to study. So we'd study until 8, 9, 10 o'clock in, uh, in the classrooms, and then we'd come back early in the morning and take our classes. Yeah. That was a wonderful thing, but that's a challenge, because you have to walk and go home late at night, but in those days, nobody had any fear of going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Then you go to sixth form, same thing. I spent sixth form sleeping on the floor of our cousin's house, and I had no problems doing that, because I had that vision that that was a challenge. I went to si I went to St. John's Co College sixth form, and I can tell you, I went to the, the Bliss Library, you remember Bliss, mm -hmm. Bliss Library? That's where I studied, mm -hmm. and I had no problems with doing that. Money was tight. $30 a month, that's what the government gave me to live on, and I gave all that money to my cousin. So you recognize you don't have the money, but you have the motivation you want that's to right. succeed. Th that and, that and I went to school with some of the most wealthy Belizeans, but I come from Lee PG, I yeah. just had enough to keep me going. And I, had, I was proud of that, that we from the out districts can come and get an education. And believe it, every time you get a little bit more, the door got, uh, a few more doors were open. Yeah. You said a key thing just so you had enough to keep you going. You know, what that and, and that is what is important, right? Mm -hmm. That we keep going, that we don't stop. And if we fall, that we get up again and again and again. Absolutely, right? Doc. I tell you, you do not stop when you have an obstacle in the way. You need to keep on going, find ways. And you know, up to today, you find obstacles in the way and you never stop because that's a way of life. And we will fight to the end, but the fight is not a good word, but we're going to go solve problems and solutions to the end. And that's an attitude that I want everybody to have. You have to be able to solve problems along the way. Education should help you to solve problems. It is said, uh, uh, there's a common phrase that says, success is failure turn inside out. Absolutely. <laughs> I have another way to say it. You so say it your It's way, 15 years of hard work. Uh -huh. Nobody realized that you had to put in 15 years yes. of heavy lifting, and all of a sudden he's successful. Overnight success mm -hmm. takes 15 years of hard work. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? That's true. It's the same thing. I could tell you, I could tell you by experience myself, you know, Absolutely. that a lot goes into preparing yourself, 
a lot goes into actually doing the work, understanding what you're doing before you become successful. It, it's not so, it's not something that just not falls out of the sky unless you invent something. And, uh, <laughs> and that's a much harder thing. But the typical human being has to work hard. So when people are playing, I'm studying, mm -hmm. and I had no problems with that because I realized that's what it takes, you know. Mm -hmm. But then the question we need to ask is. How did I realize that? Are other people realizing it too? Yes. By the way, this is graduation season for the uh, world. Yes, it is, it is. Do you know the power of graduation? Mm -hmm. Graduation says that somebody has achieved something. And we need to remember that graduation is not only to find a job, it's to educate the human being, to empower the human being. It's forever. Mm -hmm. So if you get your bachelor's, and you know what I like? When a family never had even one person graduate from college, mm -hmm. and they have that person in that family, that says that it's likely that a person will break the cycle of poverty and get off and live a little better life, and hopefully they come back and help the other ones. And since we're talking a bit about education, Doc, what, what, what is your interpretation of the meaning <coughs> of education? What is education? Education is to make you grow as a human being. You look the same outside, you know. It's kind of like when I came back with all these degrees and so on. I'm Albert. They give me the, my nickname. Some of my students still call me Puppy, my oh. friend, my pet name, and I laugh because I'm Puppy on for them, but inside I'm a totally changed human being, you know, and I love it because, hey, I'm very humble that the degree doesn't make you, is what you do with the education. Mm -hmm. Education is a transformation of a human being. If you don't change, then the education is a waste of time. So putting it in how some other people put it, or, or how I sometimes I end up putting it as well, education is to draw it from within you, what you have inside of you. Absolutely. It's meant to provide the vehicle through which you can express what is inside of you. And you know, education makes you empowered, and it makes you, nobody can pull quick one by you so easy. Yeah. And so education is about bringing out what you have, how you are going to share that though. And so we are highly educated. We share that knowledge with people because there's something there that we have that, that we need to share. And I, I teach thousands of students here in Belize when I was a teacher at Comfrey and Clever College, as well as my present role. I have taught thousands of kids. And they look at me and say, I can learn something from this gentleman. Mm -hmm. And what is it? Well, my, my approach to education is not learning facts and remember them one by one. Yeah. How do you take facts? and use it to better your life. That's what education has to be. So everything I teach, I say, no, how can you use it? And my evaluations say this, the students will write, I like this professor because he's saying that I will learn it and I can use it this way to improve my life. And that's what education is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Not just get A's. Getting A's is almost irrelevant when it comes to education. You need to have them because you have to pass and so on. But the idea is then you need to come out as a human being that is rounded, know your limitations, know when to shut up, and you need to know when you can really put in and say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, Doc, we were mentioning the word success just now, and success is something we all want to have in life. Exactly. If we live, it's because we want to live successful mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us set out to be a failure in life. There's mm -hmm. I, I have not met, at least I have not, I don't know if you have, but I've not met anybody who said, I want to be a failure in life. Mm -hmm. Everyone will look at you and say, I want to be a success in life. Now, what take you, what, will, what do you have to do to embark on this road to success? What, 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 what makes you successful? You know, I'm very pleased that we're at that spot because success is a very interesting word. Success could be what you think success is. Exactly. And so we need to define what success, mi success exactly. means. Having a million dollars might be successful for some people and others will say, I don't want I don't that. Want that. Yeah. I don't want that. So yeah. I have to then refine the, the word success depends on what bar what you set. That's right. Well, what, bar you you, what bar you set. So <laughs> all human beings set different bars. Exactly. And we had this discussion the other day that some people have no interest in being very wealthy and others that say, I want the next dollar I could find. Some might prefer only have a very good family and make sure they have a house and, and so on. So we need to also pr uh, define success. Now, I know... A I good teacher is successful. Exactly. A good policeman is successful. A good soldier is successful. Totally a good right. farmer is a successful person. You know, a good drain sweeper is a successful person totally as right. long as he or she believes in his or her heart that 
that is the type of success they were aiming for in their lives. Am I right in saying that? I Doc? totally concur. Success is which bar you set. So if you feel you're a failure, it says you did not reach the bar that you had set. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I call my success in a sense uh, academic success, but it's more than that because I've been very applied. My life is full of many jobs where I actually did real applications. And even now, I told you, when as a teacher, I feel that I'm successful in that classroom because I could bridge the gap between academia and real world. Real world. So those students say, hey, I, told, I like to tell them I had the opportunity to hire and unfortunately I had the opportunity to fire because of the management jobs I've had and so on. So success is about you, uh, the bar you set. So when somebody has achieved a, a bachelor's degree, like many of them are going to have, are having that now, they graduate, that's a, a success. But it doesn't mean the ultimate success is what you do with that. So it's some people might say, yeah, I've achieved this, rah, rah, rah. But it's more than that. You have to determine. So m in my mind, success means being able to apply what you have. And I take it one step further, and I think we both have the same idea. Helping people to be better. That's what success means for me. If I could take this knowledge that God gave me and I could impart it on other people, that's what I call success. And I'll tell you one thing to tie it in. Uh -huh. I had a guy who I, I bought a car from. He sold hundred, lots of cars. He says, you got a deal if you think you got a deal. Yeah. Does that make sense? I agree. If you think you got a deal, you got a deal. Exactly. Right. But that no mean that he couldn't sell you the, the car cheaper. cheaper yeah. He said, but, but if you feel it, you got a deal. You, that's okay, you got so. a deal. So yeah. success is kind of like that. Success is not the external alone. But external will look at you. Oh, I mean, no, you could have turned doctor, but you never ran a school. And then, then they brand you. I don't like that kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I've known people who couldn't get the opportunity because of whatever reason. And they still are successful. I have people in Toledo right now. I won't call names. They couldn't finish their high school because of uh, yeah. economic, and they probably have more more assets and more wealth than many of us. So, how important now are the roles of attitude and discipline in our lives? I'll tell you, the attitude is what drives people to reach altitude, and if you do not have the right attitude to learn and to be respectful and to learn to have synergies with people you're not going to climb the ladder of success. Can you? No, no, we get there by ourselves. You know? yeah. We had to get help of people along the way. Mm -hmm. And so my thinking is that somebody help you, and you have to, when you have done well for yourself, you have to help other people. But we all get where we are because of the help of each other. And I've lived it I've, I've all along the way. Somebody say, let's give him a chance. Yeah. And so what should be the correct attitude of, let's just say, a young person trying to climb up the ladder like you, like you did? Mm -hmm. What should be the attitude? The attitude should be one <coughs> of openness, willing to give, to get, and never all for me and none for you. We have to take that attitude. And attitude is, being, attitude is reflected in being respectful. Yeah. <coughs> Arrogance, not a good attitude to have. Attitude, by the way, how do you get to get this attitude that I'm talking about? <coughs> upbringing, your parents have a lot to do with your attitude. Mm. You have some personal characteristics where the parents can't touch. That's yeah. just how you're wired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But parents have an attitude. Be respectful to the elders and be respectful to your teachers. Basic, basic, mm. basic things. And then if you have the basic understanding, that will help you to reach altitude. Because mm. attitude, people read you right away. Huh, he got a bad attitude. Mm. And so if I may help you, I don't want to help you anymore. Mm. So you have to create that environment, passion that you want to be to grow and be successful. But the key word is success that we brought back. You're successful. I am. Chris is successful. Mm. All of us are successful. And we need to. Uh, Ava is very successful, but in our own way. And so we have to define what success is for each human being. And then discipline. Discipline. Discipline means you go forward and do what it takes to reach your goal. And that is the missing component. A lot of people get, get disappointed or discouraged. You don't get discouraged when you are working in something critical. Yeah. It's like if you're building a house and you can't get a load of sun from this guy. Mm -hmm. Get it from the other guy, but you make sure the house is being built. You don't stop. Uh -huh. you know. So you have to. All of us have it. And the obstacles in life would be one of money. You don't say, well, I can't go to school now because I don't have the money. If you really want to go to school, you will search under every stone to find the funding and go. But I always say, if you borrow for go to school, 
He's paid back. Yes, that's discipline. That's discipline. Yeah. We will wrap up our conversation with Dr. Albert Williams as he speaks of building confidence in young students to ensure they have a solid foundation to contribute positively to their development. We also hear more of his music after this break from a word from our partners, Shell Belize Limited, Honorable Kevin Bernard, the Belize Tourism Board, and the Barry. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more feelings. Santa Marta had a chance to voice their concerns and shape the future of your village with Honorable Kevin Bernard's recent consultation. I want to thank each and every one of you who came out today to voice your concerns and to address the many issues raised today at our Santa Marta consultation and clinic day. We discussed very critical issues including land, health, education, road infrastructure, which are all important matters that we can address together. And I am committed to ensuring that we can move Santa Marta forward. Yo le doy las gracias porque siempre él ha estado para nosotros. Está claro que estamos viendo el trabajo que nuestro honorable Kevin Bernard está haciendo en nuestra aldea. Honorable Kevin Bernard is a dedicated public servant who is committed to improving the lives of his constituents. He has a proven record of delivering results and fighting for the people he represents. Thank you, Honorable Kevin Bernard, for your leadership and for being a voice for the people of Santa Marta. Together, we can build a better future for all of us. It don't matter what part of the jewel you come from, you that you and me that me. But guess what? All are we the one. Doc, most of us, you know, are products of what we learned as a child, mm -hmm. you know, wh what was planted in us as a child. And that's where I was going with this pass and fail thing, mostly to the, at the primary school level and maybe a bit at the early secondary schools right. um, as, as well, you know, not, not necessarily <laughs> at the tertiary level. But so because once you reach a tertiary level, it's because you've already right. passed through some stages. The formative stages of the individual is where I wanted to go. Exactly. So uh, when you're at that l level there, they're so more sensitive to this kind of talk about pass and fail. Mm -hmm. So we uh, need parents and teachers. But I'm going to start with the teachers. Teachers need to look at what their skill, their knowledge, and see what they're learning and see if they can help them at school. Because many times, many parents in Belize don't have the education. Like I told you, my father and mother mm -hmm. can't read and r couldn't read and write. They couldn't help us. But I remember getting help from the teacher. And so the teacher in my primary school can help a little bit. And I, and I believe that's where we have to go. We have to lean on the teachers. So we need to empower the teachers mm -hmm. to help the children or talk to the parent and say, mm -hmm. you know, Michael is not doing so well on 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 this little al uh, uh, arithmetic here, but maybe he could get some help here and there, or maybe I could give him a little extra tutoring in the evening. So I'm leaning on the teacher to help because many times, but I do not want 
at that early age, they have to be able to get the core knowledge, the basis. You remember if the foundation not built properly, That's the house the will fall That's down. That's where I wanted to go, the foundation. The foundation. And so we have to ensure that all children in Belize that have the capacity to get that foundation that if they need to go on to a higher level of education or to learn skills and so on. So primary school is a key pe place. Now, I don't like to hear about pass and fail in primary school. Primary school, we need to find a way to make sure 99 or 100% of them pass. Yeah. So I, I think that's where we have an obligation and the teachers and the country that they need to have a foundation that's so solid and we put that in place and so the parents have to help, but the system, we lean on the system tremendously mm -hmm. to help us with education, you know, primary school. And as I said, many parents do not have the wherewithal, the knowledge, and maybe, many parents are very young lately, you know, and maybe they have to, they don't have the knowledge how to help their children, but they have to work closely with the school. There's no simple, easy answer with that question. No, you are an academic, mm -hmm. but looking, looking at the system that we operate under, don't you think, well, maybe let me get your opinion. <laughs> Do you think it is too skewed towards academia? You know, academia all over the world is a big component of education. And so we, we kind of like process you through a certain series. Oh, you get your primary school, then you go to college, high school, and then, then regular college, then if you want to go to master's and PhD. And if you want two PhDs, all of that available. Yeah. That's a, stream. That's a stream. The stream has proven that you could improve the lives of people. Exactly. But you have, exactly. like I said, there are 8 billion people and art billion. Not everybody could go. I mean, when you stop and see there's a, f there's a pyramid of how people are trained, few people ever get the PhDs. Most people are at the bottom level. Yeah. My thinking is that they have to have concurrently technical schools for people who have an interest Thank in you. building. That's where I was going. People who have um, building, want to do electrical work. Yeah. You could make a good living as a builder. I uh -huh. mean, Belize is now building all over. People uh -huh. are working and they can do, make a good living building. So my thinking is academia is only one of the, the many possi possibilities. Right. And people need to recognize that if you can't go to school, that no not mean you're not successful. You could Thank do you. something else and be successful mm -hmm. and be proud of it, you know. Mm -hmm. I like the story where people will have a small business and they run that business, and then all of a sudden, if they want to expand it, they can. So you I know, like one that. of the biggest empires in this country, business empires in this country, started with a gentleman selling goods out of a suitcase. And that has turned into one of the biggest companies ever in Belize. I won't call the name yeah. right now, right. but that's what that gentle, how that gentleman started this, his, his, his empire. Right, that and it exactly that says exactly what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. That the, the what you are cannot should not be determined by what you know academically, but it should be determined by what you have inside of you as an individual and where you want to take your life. In other words, we should, from we are young, be making decisions as to where we want to go with our lives. And there's nothing wrong if I just want to be a policeman or a drain sweeper. Hundred percent. Right. The, the success, again, depends on who you are and the bar you set. And so if you want to be the best policeman that you or could ever be, the best train sweeper, best train sweeper uh, that is perfectly that is fine okay. with me. I think we have no choice but to accept that kind of thinking exactly. because there are some people who will be the best professor, some will be the best entrepreneur, some will be the best. The key word is best yeah. at whatever you do. That's right. And some, that's just how we should see the world. Be the best at what you are. You know, you know, you know that, that brings me to this poem that I like to recite. And uh, maybe I could get your comment on it since we are here talking, you know, about, uh, about this, this start of, start mm -hmm. of thing. My grandfather, Reverend James Alexander Christopher Elliot, right. wrote this poem that has guided me for, for since I was a child coming up, right? Okay. It, and it's titled The Best, just like what you said just mm -hmm. now. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, let me, I want to break down the poem to you, and then I'll get your opinion on it, right? right. It's very, very short, very short, very short. Yeah. If what you have done is all you could the best, then be content and leave to God the rest. Things fluctuate, nor joy nor sorrow stays. Off changing scenes and changing moods amaze. But he who learns that in all things there is good, 
that passing failures are strengthening food, will climb the hill though his defeats confess and push through all to sweet success. This whole, Beck, I hear your words. This <laughs> whole show is based on that poem that your grandfather wrote. We are talking about success and challenges and how to beat them and continue. Isn't that amazing? Your grandfather had written a poem that will last Way back in the 1930s. And it will last for another thousand years yeah. because those words will never change in human beings. Mm -hmm. That we will have challenges and we will have to go through uh, have to um, beat them yeah. to be successful, be successful. And, be and be the best. But being the best is the secret. You could be the best at whatever you do. You don't want to come in, ah, I'll just half do it. I know into that half do thing. Yesterday we were putting up some some little um, windows window things for somebody and he can't bend. I told the gentleman, you know, my thinking, he can't go bend. You have to fix it. Mm -hmm. And he agreed with me. He said, you know what? Let's just fix it and do it properly. That's the best. That's the best. No, what, what, what's the difference between being the best and um, aspiring to do the best that you can? Because, because I do the best I can does not mean that I'm the best in this particular field, exactly. right? But if I do the best I can with what is within me, then more than likely I will be successful. No, no, no. That's a little no, no, I <laughs> totally understand that. There is something that we have to always understand. There are rarely any instances when you, you will not have somebody better than you in a That's field. I'm, I'm in my field. I'm among some of the best ones in that university in That's that field. Point. But I am not the best yeah, one. The There's always best. somebody. Did you notice lately that they found a young a little girl, at, I think he's of 12 or 13, in, in Iran, that had an IQ higher than Albert Einstein? Okay. Just happened. So Einstein was considered the ultimate best, best brilliant human being, and this little girl has an IQ higher than him. So the, 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 the answer that would be in short would be do the best you can mm -hmm. with what you have. Thank you. That's the secret. Uh -huh. Be the best you can with what you have uh -huh. is the ultimate philosophy of life. Uh -huh. And if you do that, you will see all the other pieces come in place. Yeah, because God, God takes care of the rest. <laughs> that too, as I said, probably the most important <laughs> statement because we are yeah. Christians at heart. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you do the best, and you generally do the best, people will even forgive you if you're not reaching the best that they want. And, and, and continuing along the, that, that, that poem, things fluctuate, nor joy, nor sorrow. Stay. Things change around you, right? Hundreds. And you have to adapt to those changes, right? You have to, and that's important. If you don't adapt to changes, look at the uh, artificial intelligence coming right coming now. Around, yeah. And if you don't adapt to the change, yes. then you will be frustrated and you won't be able to solve these problems that I'm talking about. It, right? yeah, exactly. Right? So you have, to you have to adjust and be flexible to learn. Uh, and that's what education should do for you. And the other part of the poem says, in, and um, you must recognize that in all things there is good that your failures are your strengthening food. You better believe <laughs> that. So all, we need to be optimistic, and oh. when things are bad, or when you fail, as we, we use the word, as we, use, we describe it, you still jump up back yeah. and get up on your feet. Yeah. You know, you fall flat, but you get up back. I agree yeah. with that. Uh -huh. uh, we live it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you learn from your failures, right? You have to. If you don't learn from your failures, you'll make the same mistake over and yeah. over. If you knock your finger once with a nail and you left it there again, you'll knock it again. So you learn, you know, for so sure. Doc, we are building a nation. Name Belize. We love this country. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we put ourselves in that success mode, that, 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 um, to move forward with, 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 with success? You know, I'm so proud success. that you bring it from personal mm -hmm. level to a nation now. Mm -hmm. So as a nation, the leaders have to think the same way. We want only the best for the country, and we will make decisions to bring out the best of our people mm -hmm. and from the resources. So. We, in economics, we have a saying that if you could shuffle the resources to make the world better, more people, then you should do it. Mm -hmm. You should shuffle the resources, the land, the labor, and the capital and in such a way that you cannot shuffle it anymore. So you get the ultimate best outcome. Mm -hmm. And that's what we as leaders need to do. We need to get the best out of the land, with labor, with capital, when we mix them together. So when you take, say, building a house. I like building a house because we all like houses. When you take the money and build a house, that house should bill you, say, $100,000, and you only bill a $50,000 house. You just messed up. Mm -hmm. That house should have a hundred in it, 
all built properly so that when the first storm comes, the roof no go. Mm -hmm. Or you could survive 30 years or 40 years before you see any damage mm -hmm. done. That's called the best. Mm -hmm. And you have to put the resources. So as a country, we have to think just like building that house. We, mm -hmm. have, we are building Belize. Yeah. We are building a house. Best. And we need to build the best Belize, putting the resources to work. So we got all kind of resources, natural resources. We got the human being. In fact, to me, the most important resource in a country is the human being. Yeah. You could have the prettiest building, but if you have poor trained human being in that building, the service will not be up to par. No, no Doc, I'm totally enjoying this conversation, <laughs> right? Too, yes. And um, But a lot of us are in a state of dependence versus being in a state of independence. Mm -hmm. Now, the two words are so similar, but they mean completely the opposite. Dependence means, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. You are dependent on the system, on a politician, or on somebody exactly. to, for your well-being. Mm -hmm. Independence means that you are really dependent on yourself. Mm -hmm. You know. Now, we live in an independent country named Belize, which means that we are here to fend for ourselves to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. right? We were once a colony, which means that we were in a state of dependence. Now, applying this to our lives, now, how do we move from a state of dependence to true independence? You know, it's so funny you bring up the independence and dependence. <laughs> yeah. Dependence is like a child, yeah. and you raise the child and the legal age, you know, I think, where's the legal age? 18, maybe? 18. So, at 18, they supposedly get independent, and they move on, so the independence. So, being dependent simply means you depend on somebody else to take care of you and meet all your needs. Nothing wrong with that. But the question is, you can't live like that forever. You have to grow up as a country, as an institution, as a human, an individual. So all of us became, were dependent on our parents, and that's how the system works. We were dependent on Old England. Yeah, we were dependent on Old England too. Mm -hmm. But as we become independent, we have a different frame. Uh, independent means you're supposed to be able to create your own strategies for the, your own country. And I always, I'm glad you brought this up because from our field, you need to strategize for what Belize wants. Mm -hmm. And if somebody come in with some gifts or some other thing, they has to fit into your Belize plan, not into their plan. I mean, we'll help them too, but Belize should have its own strategic plan of where its people will go, how much land we're going to use for agriculture, and all of this. And if somebody come in with a plan way, no fit into your model. So it's what Belize wants, and I want to impress upon all of us in this country that we need to come up with what we want. There's nothing wrong with getting things from the other countries of the world, but it has to fit into our strategy. Mm -hmm. So if somebody come and tell you, I want to do something that has no connection with what you were thinking, you shouldn't just take the money if it's free money. Well, I call it free, but you know, there's no free lunch anyway. But your yeah. attitude has to be that we have our plan, the master plan if you want to call it. How will it benefit our country? And I'll tell you, we shouldn't just be, be eager to take money from anywhere until it fits into what we want. So we are getting all kinds of offers from all over the world, and it's okay. But you have to decide, does it fit into our story? And you have to know how much you have to give back. Because in our thinking, there's no free lunch. Mm -hmm. So if somebody gives you a loan, I, I, I purposely put a loan, I won't say country or so on, if you can't pay back, you have to know what are the conditions that mm -hmm. in the fine print. Mm -hmm. Some countries of the world, and I'm, I have to be careful with this thinking, but they say if you can't pay back, then we own it. Mm -hmm. You heard that statement? Mm -hmm. So we cannot just go borrow so, many m so much money and say that, well, if you know, we, it is for us. If you can't pay back the loan, you need to know what are the conditions of not paying back. And there's a, com there's a particular country in the world that says if you can't pay back, then, then we have to it has to become our property. Mm. So do not just be quick to get loans from other countries. You have to dive down. I know we have very competent people at different spots, but they have, to, they have to literally ask themselves the basic question. What is the commitment when we take on this? And it could be mm. from the IDB or from any other loan agencies or any funding agency. Or individual. Agent, or individual mm. too. So we need to not be going with your eyes half closed or closed. You mm. need to know what you're getting into. It's, it's, it's about the conditions of uh, what you're doing. So being independent says that you have the wherewithal to question what you're getting into so you don't become dependent again. again.
Because dependency comes in many forms. Absolutely right? correct. And right. the same thing with our children. We say, hey, you're becoming dependent. You should be able to take care of yourself. If you need to come back home, you can. But that option is always there. But you have to be able to be independent. Now back to us as, a, as, as persons. We, we right. did the analogy with the country. Right. Wouldn't you say the same apply to us as individuals? Because, you know, we, we, we as individuals should be as always striving to move from this culture of dependency to one of independence. You know right? something? That it starts with us. That's actually what we should train our children to think that, hey, I want to help you through to a certain point. I want to educate you. And I wanna even if I have to help you with a little something else, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you have to learn to live if we're not here. Mm -hmm. And that's a lesson that all parents have to have. And they do. Most parents understand yeah. this concept of independence. And so they children, other, uh, there are certain other cultures where they shoo you out of the house, meaning, hey, you finish, you get your education, go live. We, we are not as strict as that. Some people will um, hold on to you a little longer, mm -hmm. and it's the option is there. But some of those some old kids, student, uh, those old p kids are starting to come back home too. So there, mm -hmm. there's a foreign against with the complete independence and not so, uh, you know, it's a little form of dependence. Yeah. But we would like to empower our children so that they can live on their own if they have to. Mm -hmm. That's the key right there. Independence means I have the ability to do things on my own. It doesn't mean you're not going to work with other people, but yeah. you don't need the main source of dependency, yeah. mm -hmm. usually the parent or handouts from the government yeah. in the uh, public. You can make your decisions as to what would benefit where you want to go exactly. and the strategies that you have in mind. Uh, it's right. important that you do that and you think like that at the personal level, at the family level. You need a family that could be dependent, independent also. And the independence could be financial independence. And that's the key one that's hard for us right now because we, we did this discussion on poverty uh, prior. And poverty sometimes makes it hard to be very independent. But wouldn't that lead you to the, the necessity of goal setting? In other words, you got li li life could be like take a journey. Mm -hmm. It is a journey. Right, if you just don't know where you want to go, then you will just move around and go nowhere because you have no destination in mind. But if you set a fixed destination in mind, you will embark on the road towards that destination because that's where you want to go, understanding fully well that you have obstacles and so right. um, on the road to where you're going, but you accept those obstacles. Yeah, right. you know, goal setting is, is goal setting is a very goal setting. Goal yeah, setting, goal setting is mm -hmm. co co very difficult for a lot of us to do. You know, I'm thinking back. Did I set that I wanted to be a doctor mm -hmm. so many years? No, but I said I wanted to do better in certain things and certain doors open. But we could set medium and short term goals and uh -huh. then long term goals. So that's what we would do when we do financial literacy. We'll tell people set some goals and mm -hmm. achieve them. Okay. But goals don't only have to be money. You could say I want to build a house in that's five right. years. Yeah, and you could do it. Or I want to get this education by then. I want to have a child by then, or so on. Setting goals is uh, very important. Now, if you don't set goals, life still goes on, you know. It and, goes on, and, and then after the end of the day, you say, where did I go? That's <laughs> the problem. And we need to get people to say, when I reach 65 or see, reach a certain 55, whatever, I have achieved these goals. And there's nothing wrong with deciding to set those goals. And I usually encourage some goal settings. You know, you have to, and you... Literally work your, like the famous saying is that if you don't have a goal, any road will get you wherever you want to go. You know, if you don't have no idea where you're going, go however you want. We don't like that too much. And, and what about uh, those who would set a goal and figure that by tomorrow or right away, you're going to reach those goals <laughs> or, 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 or the road to those goals, it, it should be an easy paved road. Well, you remember we started somewhere in the middle said uh, overnight success takes 15 years of hard work, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's some obstacles in the 15 way. 15 years of, of hard, hard work. work. To be yes. Okay. And so people need to recognize that you could set a goal today. That's if it's a long-term goal, it'll take 10 to 15 years to achieve. Mm -hmm. If it's a short-term goal, you have short-term goals that you could get achieved oh, yeah. in a day or a medium term in a year or two. Oh. So if you have a long-term goal, say, for example, I'm today working. I want, by the time I reach 65, I am a millionaire. We we'll always have people dreaming about being a millionaire. Start to save. <laughs> save. <laughs> and you have to start to invest. And you know, be a millionaire till you reach 65. If yeah. you could do it sooner, that better. Yeah. But 
you have to set some financial goals. You have to set some other goals in life. You have to set family goals. Uh -huh. And I think it's important to have that. I think people set goals, you know, but they're not writing them down or they just kind of dream about them and talk about them. I usually say you should write them down or you should discuss them with key people in your life or at least have some idea of what you want to do, but not just, just waywardly live life. I so you have to see it. You have to feel it. You have to breathe it. I have to believe it. Thank you. <laughs> and that's to me is the key part. And most important, you got to move towards it. Ah, uh, <laughs> implementation. If you know implement, you know, happen. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you could have all kind of goal, but if you know get your hand dirty and you yes. know flex your muscles and your brain, you not happen. You're not happen. So how do you excite somebody who's starting up life right now uh -huh. about getting these things done? Because you have the internal factor and you got the external factors. So our job as leaders of the country is that we have to make sure the external factors are in place so that this internal motivation and drive not get wasted. I have a phrase that says that we have many diamonds that were never discovered mm -hmm. because of that same external factor. Mm -hmm. The system is not allowing the, the diamonds to shine. Mm -hmm. And so they just never, you never know that mm -hmm. there are some geniuses in that level of society. Mm -hmm. So we've got to set the environment so that these geniuses can come shine academically, anywhere, um, entrepreneurially, anywhere. Popularly, it's called the enabling environment, right? Exactly. <laughs> enabling environment is a nice way to say it. Yeah. And we as a country have to set that enabling environment. So all leaders, politicians, church leaders, all leaders have to say, I'm going to make this environment so enabling that people can grow. Can grow. And, and, and we won't stifle anyone because of what, how they think or how they, what are they affiliated to, um, either politically, religiously, or any, any, any other kind of way. And that's any the kind of freedom problem. of thought that I think we need. Society needs that, beha that behavior that I could think, I could act, I could do things. As long as you do it for, for, not for good, mm -hmm. that's, uh, I, I encourage that tremendously. To the benefit of your fellow Belizean for the benefit of the fellow Belizean so that you could walk down the street and feel more comfortable that your action helped that fellow that is working there doing his best uh -huh. job uh -huh. keeping that street clean. Yeah. And to me, we are as leaders of a society, we need to ensure that we could make the best environment so that if that guy is cleaning the street, hopefully his children may not want to do that but has the have the opportunity to move on move to on. do something else. And I, I bring back the, the situation in the United States. Many of the immigrants from Central America go to the United States, and the least included, mm -hmm. and they do all the heavy lifting in America, the jobs that many Americans will not do. Mm -hmm. But their children are going to college and school, exactly. and they will break the cycle of poverty. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that whatever we do comes back to the best. It has to be the it best. Is the best. <laughs> you got to give your best in whatever you're doing. Absolutely. You can't go halfway, Doc. You have to do the, the best. Only the best will do. So that's what I, we are doing right here. We're giving the best. Yeah. I play that guitar to the best of my ability. And yeah. it's the same way we, we have to do the best, you know? You just mentioned the word guitar. Right. And I wouldn't want us to leave without you expressing yourself through your guitar playing once again. Right? I so sure will. Will we do that? I, I certainly will play a song for you. Let us end with a lively song. A I'll lively song. song. I think right. most Belizean, Belizeans will like this song. Anybody who is hearing it will like it. Uh -huh. And it's straight from here again. I play from what comes out of me. So I'll do that. Doc, I enjoy this conversation that, 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 that we have had. You know, um, really you have enlightened me a, a lot too, you know, and, and, and clarified a lot of things that maybe I was thinking about. You know, and, and, and so on. So I want to thank you so much for, for, for doing that. But let's yeah. go to what you love too. I will do that. Right? And that's the music. We, we do that. I want to thank you also, and I want to thank the love team. I want to thank everyone that has made this opportunity. And I want to thank the audience, the Belizeans who are listening, so that we could, you know, inspire some of the people to make their lives better. I think that's what we're doing. So, as I always tell you, these sessions are like I have a live classroom and we're talking <laughs> like we're in school without being a preacher. And so I'm sharing my music. I'm sharing my talent. You're sharing your talent and your music, uh, uh, your, uh, your like for music because I've I seen. I love music, Doc, but I can't play a note. I, I, know, I, I know, know you love music. Uh -huh. 
And so we are sharing all of this with the hope that we will help to make the world a better place. And that's what it's all about, right? That was enjoyable, just like how we started the show, <laughs> you know, with the guitar. We ended with a guitar piece. We ended with you doing what you really love to do, which is playing that guitar. Thank you, Chief. This has been a pleasure to work with you. And uh, this guitar is like, for me, like riding a bicycle. I've just played it however it comes out, as I said, from the heart. So thank you very much. And I. I'm happy that we're beginning, we be began the show with the guitar and we're ending it with the guitar. So right. thank you so much. Thanks to your team. And love flows from the heart, right? Absolutely. Right. And because it flows from the heart, it's also a choice because we can try to stop the flow and do something else. Or we can allow it to flow. We Absolutely. can choose to allow it to flow, right? Absolutely correct. Love right. has to flow. Right. Absolutely. Right. And so when we choose to allow it to flow, you know what we say here, Doc? That's yeah, right. Let's say it. We say Belize and beyond. beyond. Thanks, Thanks for choosing, choosing love. love. <laughs> All right. Belize Watch. Knowledge of the past. Impacting the present. Building the future. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the jewelry come from. You are you and me are me. But guess what? 